Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about a technique that you can use to clear out the contents of any arrays that you might have within your VBA code. Um, this is something that I came across again a few days back. I haven't used the technique for a while myself and I thought it would make a nice short video uh, that shows you just how you can quickly and easily clean up and reuse your arrays. So in the Visual Basic Editor here, you can see I've defined a subroutine for arrays arrays, and I've then defined three different arrays. Each of these are a fixed array, uh, and by fixed I mean that they have fixed dimensions. We have an integer array, a double array, and a string array. If we move a little bit further down, I've then got some code uh, just to set the values in these arrays to something that is a little more sensible. So in the case of the integer array, we set each of the values to 3. In the case of the string array, we use the word 3. And in the case of the double array, this is a two-dimensional array, so we need uh, two for loops, one inside the other. And then we set each of the values to 5.2. And in each of these loops here, you can see I'm using the lower bound and upper bound functions to make sure that in each case, we are never trying to access an array element that does not exist. Now a little bit further down, we've got some debug print statements. And in between these, we are going to erase each of these arrays. And what we're going to do is run the code and have a little look in the locals window to see just what happens before and after we erase these arrays. So let's click on the play button. We can see the code has stopped just before this debug print statement. And let's go to view locals window. And we can see in the locals window here, we've got each of our three arrays, the integer, the double and the string. If we open up the integer, we can see uh, the indexes go from 0 to 2. There are three of them. And we've got values of 3 in each of these elements. Okay, In the double array, uh, we've got a two-dimensional array, so it's an array of arrays. And in each case, we've got a value of 5.2 for each of our elements of the array. Okay, It's just... Uh, collapse that. And in the string array, we've got the word 3 for each of the elements of the array. That's a slightly bigger array there. Um, bear in mind, we define the dimensions to be 5, so that goes from 0 to 5, with a total of 6 elements. Um, we'll talk about how to initialize and create arrays of specific sizes in a separate video. For now, I've just quickly built this code just so that we can see what happens with the arrays statement. So here we are, just before we've erased these arrays, if we click on the play button again, it will run to the second debug.print statement. And if we take a look in the immediate window, we can see the integer array now have values of zero. It has not changed the dimensions or the size of the array. We can see that the string array has empty strings for each of the elements. And we can see that the double array has values of zero again in each of the array element values. Okay, so that's quickly cleaned up our code. If we use the F5 key, that'll run through um, the rest of the code here. We're gonna close down the locals window. And this time we're gonna try the same thing, but with some dynamic arrays. So I'm gonna comment out that block of code and I'm gonna uncomment this block here. So what we're doing here now is we're defining these arrays uh, as dynamic arrays. So we're not going to specify the, di the dimensions to start with when we declare them. What we're going to do later is then redim or redimension the array to set the dimensions. And the dimensions that we're going to use are the same as before. So we can use the same code here just to initialize each of the values. But what we'll see is that when we use the erase statement, it does something slightly different with these dynamic arrays. So let's use the F5 key again. We've stopped here at the first debug print statement. If we go to view locals window and let's take a look at each of these arrays, we're going to see exactly the same thing as before. 
They have the same size and the same dimensions, and the values have been set to the ones that we specified in those loops. Okay. What you're going to see now is when we run through the array statement, it will not only clear the values, but it will also redimension the arrays so that they have no dimensions. Essentially, they're going to be zero by zero size um, and essentially just empty arrays as if we had just declared them up here. OK, so let's just run the code through and actually take a look at that. You can see straight away here, each of the arrays have just been cleared uh, so that there are no values and there are no specific dimensions to those arrays. So if you wanted to reuse those arrays again now, you would have to use a redim statement to give them the appropriate dimensions, and then you would have to actually initialize the values of those arrays. Okay, we'll continue running that code through, and that's really all I wanted to cover in this video, um, the array statement and how we can use it to clear out the elements of a fixed array and set them to a zero or an empty string and how the same statement behaves differently on dynamic arrays.